Yeah, I should probably do something about that. Recorded live, but edited for your viewing pleasure, it's Countering the Crucible. Today I have filling in for a fame is going to be Pathfinder Gaming. It's my other favorite disembodied voice, that's right. And he's gonna be going over C Rose defense with me. Plus we're gonna be talking about uh, ranking up in your division, how that works, because I've got some questions for that. So let's get to it, shall we? What do you know about ranking up in your division? Because I missed my first attack. I was so busy. I didn't attack at all and lost. I felt really bad. How many points did I miss out on? How devastating is that, do you think? Am I gonna suddenly drop down to dirt ranking or whatever? No, because you only lose like in the neighborhood of like 17 to like 20, 24, 25 points if, uh, if you lose. I don't know if it matters like how much they beat you by. But mm -hmm. you should you should find out after you know the match how many points you drop. But it's unlikely to drop you a full ranking though, in terms okay. of division. Okay. Now, unlike war, in in war you can win or lose, and as long as you're doing 50-50, a win lo win loss ratio of 50-50, you will increase and move from gold into platinum and eventually to diamond. Um, with crucible though that isn't true right like at, at some point you'll kind of peak and you'll never like I if you don't have the roster to compete you won't make it into masters is that correct i i feel like that would definitely be correct because eventually if you make it to masters you're just gonna go up against people who are gonna destroy you i mean i'm already facing people who even if they have a lower like total tcp than me their rosters are so tall compared to mine. Uh, in mm -hmm. my finals, uh, I actually fought somebody who was th almost three mil lower than me, but uh, his defense and his offensive teams were way bigger than mine. I mean, it wasn't even yeah. close. And he was like, I think 680 days played. So I'm double. I see. He, he absolutely destroyed me. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the that's the crazy thing is that you come into some of these newer players who are aren't afraid to really spend on the game and they can ramp up just the 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 trimmest roster with some of the most impactful players and you're like, "Oh, wow, you know, I, I got their TCP beat by a lot." And you find out well, they've got it all in the right places where older players like us, you know, we invested in Guardians of the Galaxy back in the day and stuff and what a waste that was. Cuz you know, no one's even using those anywhere. So it's right, it's kind of tricky. Uh, my 500k Cree aren't doing anything for me in Crucible. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, so this is C Rose defense that he sent in. Remember, we're, we don't have a list of defenses for you guys. We're just kind of cherry picking the best ones because uh, if you know the defense up the line got too long and out of control. So this time we're just looking for interesting stuff. So if you guys have new and exciting teams that you uh, tried, please feel free to resubmit all over and over and over again. I don't mind. And then if you have a really crappy defense that you need shored up, send it to us and we'll try and go over it and see what we can do. Pathfinder, uh, I sent these picks to you a day or two ago so you could look over them ahead of schedule. What do you think of team number one with the Brotherhood 2.0 on defense? I, I I feel like it's good because you're not, I mean, it's a it's a team that you can just place, right? And if you, if you underestimate it a little bit, uh, Magneto could blind you right away, which is definitely going to hurt your team. But it is a low-powered team, so mm -hmm. depending on who you go up against, it could be you know a potential easy clear. But you gotta watch out for that blind. Yeah, I think this would work really well against somebody who went super heavy on defense and didn't have enough stuff left over for offense, and they just couldn't find the right things to go into it. Uh, there's there's nothing wrong with this team. Uh, I like the ISOs. The placement is fine. I, I think uh, Juggernaut should be a Raider, uh, and I think Blob should probably be a Skirmisher. Yeah, let's go with a Skirmisher on that one. And then I think Pyro is a better choice than Mystique. But I mean, it, it all works, and it's and those changes aren't really going to affect the outcome. I think this team is going to get beat no matter what. Um, it's not a very exciting team, and I would like to see something better in here, but it might be that Ciro's going light on offense. Um, he says, the team number one is a special build. They are a lot bigger than they look. It's a timeout team. Oh, okay, so he's got some T4s stashed in there, and it should be kind of tricky. All right, well, yeah, I guess so, because the power levels are a lot higher than those rings suggest, aren't they? 
So could be good. I still don't like the healer on it. I would like to see Skirmisher and and uh, Raider on those tanks. But all in all, it's pretty good. I, I would say it's probably like a six and a half. I'd have to see it in action. Zero seems to be pretty excited about it, but I don't know. I still think it's going to get rolled. What do you think for a score? Yeah, I was I was gonna say six, and just giving just giving the the nod to, you know, saving a little bit more for offense to take out your opponent. I think mm -hmm. you need to have a bit bit of a balanced approach when it comes to offense and defense, unless your roster is just stacked. Yeah, I have a feeling Ciro is gonna be sending me pick after pick of their defensive victories, and then I'll and then I'll have to come back and edit next week and, and applaud him for it. <laughs> he says they get cancels when people underestimate them. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. It's it's something to do. What I really like is team number two, which is Drax opening with that taunt. Then you've got uh, two more tanks in there plus Ultron. Now they're gonna come in here thinking that Ultron is the problem when the reality is it's actually Ghost Rider because Ghost. Ghost Rider has all the right investment in the right places and, and no overage. Um, he's missing some T4s, I believe. Is that right, Ciro? He's missing some T4s to bring his power level down, but that's but the T4s in the, uh, the passive are where it's at. So they're going to come into this team. They're going to kill Drax. By then, somebody else will be picking up a taunt, and they'll kill them if they don't just AoE the first three guys right off the mat. And then Ghost Rider's gonna be retaliating for those kills. Ultron's gonna bring in some bots. Who cares how big Ultron is? It's about having to kill those things and having Ghost Rider retaliate, and he's gonna catch him off guard. Yeah, Ciro says it's a 1165 for the T4s and Ghost Rider. So he's gonna hit like a truck where it counts, and absolutely no wasted investment there. This is actually a really cool team. We've seen this on War Defense. It works really well. If people are not paying attention, they will get smoked by that Ghost Rider. It's kind of cool. It's a great use to, to save your resources, keep offensive things available for you, and, and fill it. The only thing I would like to see is replace Colossus with Shield Security. That way, if they go in with a single target or just adjacent damage on Drax, when Drax gets killed um then your your tank is sure to pick up the taunt they might be able to just snipe drax off and then go into this is there any uh other changes that you would want to make to this pathfinder i'm not sure i love ghost rider as a healer uh i think oh that's true I mean, obviously his ultimate is going to heal him up a significant amount and he's going to be able to use that multiple times so mm -hmm. i kind of wonder if either like a striker for just the extra damage or even rate i don't think i don't know if his ults can crit or not but if it yeah. can you might also think about doing uh raider but i, I probably choose striker because that extra damage uh g15 uh is is no joke so looking at this g15 ghost rider that's uh that's gonna do quite a bit of damage especially on that retaliate this is a, yeah this is a and cool team and if if uh, if he does go striker on Ghost Rider, then I would like to see those other minion looking guys, the the smaller tanks and stuff. I'd like to see them switch to a level one skirmisher in case they do take a turn. You'd happen to have a vulnerable on the field, which would be huge damage. You know, it's a big if, but I don't think the the fortifier is doing any of those guys any favors anyway. So I, I think the chance of a vulnerable would be better for me. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder how many times you go in and you just look at the team power and you don't look at the individual character power. I, I bet that trips up a lot of people, especially if they if they don't bring in something to take care of that Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely got to prioritize. And it's tricky, too, because you've got those tanks and you kind of have to kill them and then just take the hit from Ghost Rider. So I, I love this team. Uh, it could I, I think there's some tweaks to make it better, but I, I really like this. I'm going to give it a nine. It's a great filler, uh, especially for newer players who can who can build their Ghost Rider to those kind of specs. One, one, six, five. That's the way you want to go if you want to build one of these teams. What do you think? Yeah, I was going to say eight and a half. I, I really like it. I think the Ghost Rider retaliate that. I bet that throws people off. And if you get one defensive win, that's a 400 point advantage. So that definitely yeah. uh, could throw people off. Yeah. And honestly, even if they do beat this team, what you know, what if they get a bunch of their their members killed, hurt, damaged like it's you're not going to come out unscathed from this. You kind of got to go in and like like nuke it and, and kill everybody in one shot. And no one wants to waste that kind of power on such a small team. So it's really cool. I like that one.
Uh, let's move on to teams three, four, five, and six. And I wanna move on to all four of them at the same time because I think we should think talk about some placement changes where we're using these teams in these rooms. Do you know what I'm talking about, Pathfinder? Yeah, the first I mean the first thing that jumps out of me is is Venom and defensive reversal. You don't want you don't want defense up on your characters. So that's definitely a big uh no no for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think if if I were gonna keep these teams the same, and I think we're gonna talk about breaking these teams up, but if I were to keep these teams the same, I'd move symbiotes to room five. I'd move that uh, H for HSA team to uh, room six, and then I would move web warriors to room three. So swap them around a bit. I'm okay with your new warriors in four. That's fine, it's a decent place for them, but I would like to see you take Emma out of that room and put in Red Guardian in place of it so that they can't go in and ability block one of the new warriors and they're able to get those negative effects off, which you have both Scarlet Witch and Ghost prolonging, and that's really cool if it all works. But I don't think Emma's enough to make that happen, and I think Emma's too useful on offense for different things like... If they have a Darkhold team, you can put Emma in there in place of Scarlet Witch and your Darkhold team goes first for those mirror matches. But um, yeah, let's go back to the symbiotes. So <clears throat> the symbiotes with Venom giving the defense up uh, on his turn is a big no-no for this room. So we have to move this team out of the room. But what I think you should do is break the team up. And I think you should move Symbiote Spider-Man to the Web Warriors in place of Iceman. I don't like Iceman or the Web Warrior team. He revives, and so he has that effect where it's taking more turns to beat that team. But Symbiote Spider-Man adds the 50% health boost to the rest of the team, and I think that's way better than just the, the revive off of Iceman with his slows. Yeah, and Iceman, if you're using the Astonishing X-Men on offense, Iceman's a, a crucial part of that team, so I, I just like him with them more than I like him with the web warriors i get the the concept the web warriors go so fast that if you can get a slow on the opposing team uh you can put a big hurt uh, on them with the web warriors but i agree i like symbiote spider-man there yeah yeah um yeah zero likes the the slows because the speed bar manipulation doesn't work but you can still do speed up and slow down and stuff like that and that's cool I just think that the health bonus from SSM is gonna be better, and your symbiote team is completely wasted in room three. For for symbiotes in room three, the way it is, I'm giving that team a two. I think it's a near total waste. So the only thing that could happen is if somebody comes in there and happens to hit Venom first and knocks him under 95%, then you're safe because he won't throw that defense up, which gets flipped. But otherwise, that team's gonna get trashed pretty easy. Plus, the power levels are too wonky for me. I just, I'm just not a fan of it there. So I don't like Team Three. Uh, what do you think for your score on Team Three? Yeah, same thing. I, I'd probably give it a one or a two. Just uh, if you took that team and moved them somewhere else, then it would, it would be a better score because I, I think again, it probably saves uh, you some offense. But mm -hmm. Venom there, if he gives defense up, then, then they're pretty much dead in the water. Yeah. Um, so team four, I, I said I, I kind of like this team. I think it's okay the way it is, but I think it would be tougher with a Red Guardian drawing that opening taunt so they can't immediately pick the target that they want to do. So um, Prince of Peace says, oh, on team three, that you should sub take out Venom and sub in Doc, which would actually, that's a that's a pretty good idea, Prince of Peace. I think that would work really well. Um, but on, on team four... Yeah, I want Red Guardian in there in place of Emma. I, I don't think that her speed manipulation is gonna be enough for that team. Yeah, I agree. I, I like Emma so much more on offense. She just gives your team uh, that extra speed that you need to go first. I really mm -hmm. like Ghost on defense. Uh, that's actually thrown me off a couple times. So to me, uh, having a Ghost there is pretty is a pretty cool idea especially if uh, someone accidentally hits her. Maybe it's uh, an adjacent thing and Ghost comes back and retaliates and uh, you know slows them down even more. I, I really like that. And extending all the negative effects as well, uh, that mm -hmm. should go the same turn that Dagger uses her ultimate. So that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, and now Ciro raises a good point. Brotherhood could wipe that team without Emma. Emma makes him go before the Brotherhood. The thing is, is that I think that team is powerful enough that 
the majority of people you're going to be going against don't have a brotherhood big enough to really compete it, brotherhood definitely causes this team some problems but i think Brotherhood's an old team, and there's just so many players that have fallen away, and the newer players are not building Brotherhood. I think the odds are in your favor that they're going to go into it with something else. But ultimately, that's up to you. Uh, I'm not going to give it a bad score. I think it works just fine. I just prefer other stuff. So for me, this is an 8. Yeah, I was going to say uh, 8 as well. Uh, I just take off Emma and plug somebody else in, and that's just going to make them that much more menacing. Mm-hmm, yep. Okay, uh, the Cosmic Catastrophe room with the half Heroes for Hire, half SA. Personally, I, I think we should not bother with the Heroes for Hire in Crucible. I find them so incredibly easy to beat. They're just not designed for this game mode. The features that make them tough are unavailable. The bonuses that make them hit harder are unavailable. And they, frankly, they just suck in Crucible. So um, the SA team is fantastic. I'm assuming Sharon Carter is being used on offense because why would you replace Sharon Carter off of this team? I like doing an SA with Doc Ock and Blob or something like that. Um, it makes the team, all those deflex and stuff, it, it really it really makes the team time out and tougher to get with all that healing off of Maria Hill and everything. But if you don't have those, you know, if you don't have an extra Doc Ock, if you don't have extra adjacent deflect type characters or, or good tanks like Captain America or something like that, then I guess throw in what you got because, I mean, where else are we going to use the heroes for hire? They're not really good for offense, are they? You know, I've actually... Uh, in one of my matches, a Heroes for Hire absolutely decimated my Web Warriors. And it was really? like 120k punch up. Uh, I'll have to show you the uh, the screenshot of that, but they absolutely wiped my Web Warriors. I don't know if it was uh, an RNG thing or they just uh, are designed uh, to counter them, but man, they, they wrecked my Web Warriors. Oh. Was it a big Shang-Chi in there? I mean, they had a big Shang-Chi, but they had a big everything. The whole team was big, yeah. 770k uh, here okay. in Fire, so they definitely built them. Okay, so offense then. I'm always looking for Web Warrior counters. Web Warriors are seem to me my sticking point. I've been able to clear everything really easily, but Web Warriors stumble me all the time, and it's very frustrating. Um, I uh, This team that we're looking at here in 5 doesn't excite me a lot. Uh, it, it, it is what it is, but I think that there's better builds for either SA and, and I don't like heroes for hire on defense anywhere in Crucible. I found them easy to beat in every single room. Um, it's not very exciting, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so, so for me, I think it's just a seven. Uh, I think we can do better with different people in there. The ISO choices are fine, but, uh, I just don't like the people that are being used. I actually don't mind it at all, as long as it's not the full heroes for hire. I think the full heroes for hire are pretty easy to counter. But I do, yeah. I do like Colleen and Misty there together because when they're together, they they get all of the bonuses that they would get. Luke Cage mm -hmm. to me is just a body, uh, but right. he does give defense up, which is nice. And then Captain Sam and Maria are so large compared to the rest that if you don't take something in there to deal with it. Uh, mm -hmm. you're gonna lose so i actually yeah. i think i'd give this an eight I, I really like it oh okay okay well i for sure would like to see luke cage replaced with somebody else maybe a captain america maybe a doc ock or something like that but yeah okay uh and then finally is our web warriors and time dampening web warriors seem to work just about anywhere but i i prefer putting web warriors in either um three four or the first two rooms um, I, I like room six for Infinity Watch for the big boys. Um, I always save my Infinity Watch for room six. And so I would end up just Infinity Watching this Web Warriors and it wouldn't be an issue for me where if Web Warriors is in any of the other rooms, it becomes a little bit tr more more tricky for me, especially if it's in room one or two, because I don't want to waste my Infinity Watch on an open room. Infinity Watch can basically be used anywhere other than, I mean, even Cosmic Catastrophe, if, as long as you're running all five of the Cosmic characters, they just work slower. But um, I, I don't like using Infinity Watch anywhere uh, in the one or two. So that, when Web Warriors are there, I end up using a lesser team and I stumble. So that's why I don't like Web Warriors here. I also don't like Web Warriors with Iceman. Like I said, I want Symbiote Spider-Man or just Punk Spider in there. I don't know, Iceman might be better than Punk Spider. What would you do? Would you do Iceman or Punk Spider if you, if you weren't using the other teams? If I wasn't using the other teams, then 
I mean, anybody over Punk. I just he's just really such a, he's just he's that bad there to me. I just don't I don't see him being that good unless he's just so built up. Uh, he's just not good outside of yeah. raids. He's he's definitely the worst character on that team, I think. But yeah. uh, I agree with you. I use Infinity Watch almost exclusively in Room 6, and there's usually a pretty beefy team in Room mm -hmm. 6. And so for me, putting a Web Warriors in here is kind of a uh, a waste just just because of that reason. Because yeah. I, I'll, I, like you, struggle with, with Web Warriors right now. I need to find a more reliable counter to them. Yeah, and the Infinity Watch with their immunity and stuff like that, they pretty much come through unscathed. Uh, they might take, you know, more turns, but anybody you go against Web Warriors with is going to take more turns, so that doesn't really matter. But you're you're not going to lose anybody on a punch across with Infinity Watch into Web Warriors. You know, you're guaranteed to win that. And so that's why I like putting Web Warriors someplace else. So, <clears throat> yeah, but uh, so other than that, and, and Iceman's OK for for room six. If we move this team out of room six, then I definitely would like to see SSM. Or Doc Ock in here too. Doc Ock gives them those deflex so that when the, those rare occasions when you do hit them, it doesn't hurt them as much. So for me, I'm I'm gonna give Team Six. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna go for a seven on this, mostly because I just don't want it in Room Six. Yeah, I I think for me it's a it's a six. I don't like Iceman here very much. And because it's in room six, most people, if they have Infinity Watch, are going to use it and just absolutely wipe this team and probably have a pretty quick uh, turn bonus victory point uh, bonus as well. So I think for me, I just like to see him in a different room. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. This has been C Rose Crucible uh, review. If you want your Crucible defense reviewed, send it in. If it's good, interesting or it sucks really bad, we'll pick it. We'll put it up here. We'll go over it next week. We do this every week. Uh, usually it's a theme in here, but I really like working with people who don't use cameras because I want all the attention on myself. And so that's why I asked Pathfinder to fill in. No, I asked Pathfinder to fill in because he loves this game mode and he's really good at it too. So uh, thank you, Pathfinder, for joining me. I appreciate that very much. Uh, is there anything you wanted to mention about these teams before I let you go? No, I think it's interesting. Uh, the idea, I've had a couple of people ask me this, the idea of making a character intentionally smaller with their abilities, I think is cool. I think it mm -hmm. could potentially become, you know, a strategy if you aren't planning on using them anywhere else. That's my only hang up with it is outside of Crucible, it really hinders you. But inside of mm -hmm. Crucible, it's a cool little uh, feature that you can use to have your opponent underestimate your team. Yeah, and Ciro does a lot of this. I've done his war defense. I think I've done it maybe multiple times. I don't remember, but he's shown me some amazing tricks that he does in war defense too by utilizing these little characters that he's not using elsewhere. And you specifically put stuff in their abilities to make them look easy when they are not. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos, and we'll see you next time. Bye. And I need a call. Pathfinder or I'm gonna have a hard time conversing with him, huh? Do you ever get bored? I wonder what that feels like. I, I can't remember. Okay, he's probably wondering what the hell I'm doing. So am I.